Okay, hi there. Welcome to a video looking at some of the synoptic aspects of uh, the decision or the debate about whether to renationalize the UK water industry. Now, paper three in A level is synoptic, which means that you need to apply your knowledge and understanding of concepts and ideas and then make connections across all four themes of economics micro and macro from last year, micro and macro from this year. So whilst the UK water industry could well be seen as a micro concept, state ownership versus private ownership, there's also a synoptic aspect to it. UK Labour Party at the moment is committed to renationalising the UK water industry, uh, in particular the UK, the water industry in England where the nine water utilities are privately owned. I think the water industry in Scotland is publicly owned at the moment. So they, you'll get some context, you'll get some data response context on the water industry perhaps, some charts on bills and profits and all that, and that kind of stuff. Here's some data on, for example, uh, the uh, the dividends paid out by the water industry over the last 10 years. Labour government would actually renationalise but compensate the industry's owners, in other words the shareholders, by offering them government bonds in exchange for their shares. Over the last 10, 12 years there's been quite a significant real terms increase in water bills. Uh, although the water bills are expected to fall in the current regulatory price regime over the next two or three years. Interestingly, in 2015, a quarter of households spent more than 3% of their income on water bills. So for many households, bills of 350, 400, 450 pounds are quite a sizable percentage of their, of their income. Since privatisation, however, water companies have invested billions of pounds, tens of billions, in infrastructure assets and services. The water in England is provided to households by privately owned companies, uh, but the role of the state is, is much debated. And in particular, uh, argument, people who favour private ownership argue that utility providers uh, are better placed to provide an efficient uh, service. Uh, the public sector seen as more important when the market fails to deliver fair prices or higher quality services. Well, most people in the UK cannot choose their water provider because water in an area is provided by one pipe network. In other words, water is a natural monopoly and it's currently regulated by the industry regulator of what. So some people think the water industry should be reformed, changed in regulation, for example. Others think that it should be publicly owned. Big debate. So a classic question would be assess the micro and macro impact of water nationalisation um, or the micro and macro arguments uh, for water nationalisation. Well, in terms of the impact at the micro level, you can't go wrong with synopticity by thinking about the consequences for individual consumers and households and businesses and industries. So in terms of the impact on consumers and firms, ask, ask some questions. Will water bills be lower with state ownership. Public sector businesses, state-owned businesses, are likely to have different objectives than businesses owned by private sector shareholders. So they're less likely to aim for profit maximisation. Uh, there will be less need to charge high prices to generate those dividends to return to shareholders. It may well be the case that under state ownership, water bills will come down because you can price closer to, to marginal cost of supply. And if that's the case, uh, that would increase the real incomes and the consumer surplus for millions of households. Let's say they each got a, a £100 reduction in their water bill per year, an extra £2 per week. It would also have a micro impact on particular businesses, that particularly those who use high volumes of water, whatever it is, restaurants, hotels, uh, all kinds of businesses use vast volumes of water. So at a micro level, you could think about the impact on their operating profits. Micro can also allow you to bring in aspects of market failure. So we know there are significant external benefits from a reliable, clean, efficient water supply. Um, will state ownership change the game in terms of trying to get towards a more sustainable growth of water consumption? Are we consuming too much water in the UK? Is there a case for, for higher prices to reduce consumption? At a micro level, you should also bring in the ideas of economic efficiency. I've already mentioned that, that uh, prices may fall closer to marginal cost. Is that allocatively more efficient? What about the consequences of a change of ownership for 
productive efficiency and dynamic efficiency, innovation in the industry? Or are there possible X inefficiencies for moving from private to public ownership? So there's many, many, many different micro aspects that you could talk about in the synoptic question. What about the macroeconomic effects? Most students would associate water nationalisation with microeconomics. So the trick, the higher order skill is to analyse and evaluate in the context of macro. Let me pick out three areas for you. A big one would be the impact on government finances. In the short term, at least, the government would have to probably spend billions of pounds re-nationalising the industry. And uh, some people argue it could cost 10, 50, even more billion pounds to buy back, essentially to buy back the industry from private ownership. Uh, in the longer term, of course, the impact on government finances is more uncertain. Will the industry be profitable? Well, those profits would then flow to taxpayers rather than shareholders. The industry requires huge infrastructure spending. Well, can the government borrow more cheaply to fund infrastructure in water compared to private sector water companies? What happens if the nationalised industry performs less well under state ownership? Would that increase borrowing costs in the future? So a big macro aspect will be to think about the, the consequences for government finances, both in the near and the medium term. Inflation could be a macro aspect. If, if, if water bills come down, that obviously brings down the cost of living. There'll be a kind of one-off fall in inflation. Presumably water bills might rise by who knows, a, a modest amount year on year, in which case the inflation rate uh, may stay low. But of course, that depends on the extent of any cut in water bills and the efficiency of the system. What about jobs? Well, a public sector monopoly compared to a privately owned profit-seeking business, well, they may, they may seek to maximise employment. They may seek to keep more people in, in that industry for social reasons, for political reasons. But again, the, the possible consequence there is that might hinder economic efficiency and actually increase operating costs and perhaps the burden on the taxpayer in the future. So macroeconomics is thinking about inflation, employment, government finances. Synopticity is all about just finding those micro and those macro aspects to talk about and discuss. Evaluation arguments. Well, essentially, water is not a competitive industry. It's not something close to contestability you might try and bring some competition in terms of water supplies to businesses i think they've tried that in scotland but it's essentially a regulated monopoly so therefore it's it's not going to be a contestable sector the fundamental question is who should own it who should run it there are strong natural monopoly aspects to the water industry you can probably think about the diagram you would draw for a natural monopoly so does this strengthen the case for taking back into state ownership who knows? Certainly lower bills would improve consumer welfare in the short term, but the long term, the big, big issues are the sustainability of clean water supply and how best to address the issue, the threat of water scarcity uh, going forward, especially in, in, in if climate change is accelerating and if population is growing. Big evaluation questions to ask really, which type of ownership is best place to achieve sustainable clean water supply in the long term is ownership a change of ownership important or is it actually more important to get better regulation of the industry to overcome some aspects of regulatory failure perhaps macroeconomics is important if you have a water industry that's performing well that's efficient at low prices low cost that is almost like an improvement in the supply side performance of the economy and helps the price competitiveness of businesses that use lots of water. But again, fundamentally, the challenge of climate change and water scarcity requires huge investment, tens of billions of pounds of investment, investment needed in the water sector in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Fundamentally, which type of ownership and control is best placed to achieve this? Public versus private sector. Eventually, you have to come to a value judgment based on your economic perspective. Ultimately, it boils down to this question, who should pay for the water we consume and who should provide it? So nationalisation is a really topical issue. What I've tried to do in this video is just pick out some of the micro and macro aspects. Thank you.